Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 11 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using business objects as models in our MVC application. Until now, we have been using entity framework and entities. Entities are mapped to database tables and object relational mapping tools like entity framework, nhibernate, link to SQL, etc. are used to retrieve and save data. Business objects contain both state and behavior that is logic specific to the business. In MVC, there are several conventions that needs to be followed. For example, controllers need to have the word controller in them and they should implement iController interface either directly or indirectly. So for example, if you look at the home controller here, look at the name, you know, home controller. It has the word controller at the end of it. And look at this, this home controller is actually inheriting from the controller class. Okay, but what did we say here? It has to implement iController interface. Okay, now here the home controller is actually indirectly inheriting from the controller, I mean iController interface. Let's actually inspect that. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here the home controller class is inheriting from the controller class, but then if I right click on that and select go to definition, look at that, it inherits from controller base class. Let's right click on that and go to definition. Look at this controller base class is inheriting from iController interface, meaning our home controller class is actually indirectly inheriting from iController interface. Now, when it comes to views, we also have some conventions. You know, the names of the views are important. Um, you know, how we name them. And the location where they are placed is also important. Okay, um, let's actually understand that practically with an example. So here in our MVC application, we have this home controller within which we have this index action method. Now, this index action method is invoked when we visit this URL. Look at this. I am visiting this URL. Localhost is the name of the server. So the application is on my local machine and MVC demo is the name of our MVC project. So here it's MVC demo and within that we have the home controller and index action method. Okay, so obviously it's going to invoke this index action method and look at what we are doing here. We are returning a view within that in, you know controller action method. Now we are not specifying the name or the location of the view. So how does the MVC application know which view it has to return? Okay, that's where the conventions come into play. Okay, so the MVC application is going to look in certain folders for views with certain names. Okay, let's actually understand that practically with an example. So here at the moment, I have a view called index.cshtml which is present within the home folder of the views folder. Now let's actually run this application right now and see what's the output that we get. So by default, it's going to invoke the home and index action. Uh, you know, that's the URL. So we get the view as expected. That's fine. Now let's go ahead and change the name of this view and see what's going to happen. So I'm changing the name to index1. And now let's go ahead and rerun this application and see what's going to happen. So now let's visit home and index, you, you know, action. Look at that. We get an exception. So what is this, uh, you know, MVC application doing? It's actually looking for index.aspx or index.ascx, okay, in the home folder. And it's also looking for either index.cshtml or index.vb, I mean index.vbhtml. Um, so it's basically looking for a view file with name index, either .aspx or .ascx or .cshtml or .vbhtml in the home folder and in the shared folder. Okay, so if it doesn't find a view in those locations with those names, then obviously it's going to throw this exception. Okay, so that's why the conventions are very important as far as controllers and views are concerned. But when it comes to models, you know, we don't have any strict rules to follow. In fact, we can get rid of this models folder altogether. It's actually optional. It's not required to be present within your MVC application. Your models can reside anywhere. Okay. In fact, in this video, we'll discuss, you know, using business objects as our models and our business objects can even reside in a separate assembly. Okay. So let's actually add a class library project to our solution. And to do that, right click on the solution, add a new project. And we are going to add a class library project. And I'm going to name this maybe business layer. 
you can give it any meaningful name um, so I'm just calling it business layer okay and then we're gonna make use of this table employee so I have this table employee with these columns ID name gender city and date of birth now we want to retrieve and display this data within our MVC application so obviously to encapsulate this employee information I'm going to have this employee class so first let's go ahead and change this class name to employee so I have this employee class here let's have some properties you know to encapsulate uh, ID name you know the rest of the columns that we have in the database table so let me copy these properties so ID name gender city date of birth all of them are auto implemented properties now I'm going to add another class file and let's actually call this you know employee business layer uh, employee business layer now this class file is going to contain all the logic related to employee you know all the business logic let's make this class public okay so in reality you know this layer is going to have the business rules and validations you know whatever you know the business specific logic basically but for the purposes of our demo we're not going to have any business logic here I'm going to simply have some data access code which is going to retrieve the data from the database table but in reality you know your business layer will actually call your data access layer which will actually do the data access operation for us but to keep this example simple you know I'm going to include the data access code within the business layer okay and just to speed things up I have this code already typed because this is straightforward ADO.NET code if you're new to ADO.NET we discussed about this in a very great detail in our ADO.NET video tutorial so please watch videos from that video series so let me go ahead and paste this code right here so what is this code doing obviously we will have several compilation errors that's because we need to import some of the namespaces first of all configuration manager class this configuration manager class is present in system.configuration namespace but then here we don't have a reference to system.configuration assembly so let's go ahead and add that assembly so add reference I'm going to look for system.configuration assembly so there we go system.configuration and then let's use the namespace system.configuration and since we are you know need to write ADO.NET code I'm going to import some ADO.NET namespaces as well so system.data system.data.sql client and we have system.configuration so that should get rid of all the compilation errors So here, this class, you know, I just pasted this inside the class directly. Let's have a property, you know, maybe um, I want to have something like public I enumerable of employees. Okay, so this property here, employees, I'm just going to have a property here called employees, which is going to return the list of employees back. Okay. So within this, I have this ADO.NET code. So if you look at this, it's pretty straightforward. So let's have a get accessor, and within that, we'll have this code. I'm not going to have any set access here. Um, you know, this is a get only property, read only property. It's simply going to return the list of employees that are present in our table TBL employee. And if you look at the code, it's straightforward. We are using the configuration manager class to read the connection string from a web.config file. So within web.config file, we have this connection string dbcs, which points to um, you know local installation of SQL Server. So we are reading the connection string and we are creating a, you know, a list of employee object here. And look at this. Uh, we are building our SQL connection object. We have the SQL command. And notice this. We are using the stored procedure as we get all employees. And this is a straightforward stored procedure. Uh, no logic. It's simply a select statement wrapped inside a stored procedure. Okay, so obviously let's execute this stored procedure just to make sure we get the data as expected. So we are getting ID, name, gender, city, and date of birth columns. So, and then we are specifying the command type is stored procedure 
open the connection, execute the command, and loop through each row that we get back. And we are converting the row into an employee object, adding that employee object to the list. And finally, we are returning the list back. OK, now if you need the SQL script to create the stable and populate it with the sample data, I'll have this available on my blog so you can get it from there. All right, so at this point, we have, you know, our employee business layer implemented, OK, in a separate project. So let me go ahead and build this just to make sure everything is fine. So build succeeded, as you can see on the status bar. Now, we want to consume this business layer in our MVC application. And to do that, obviously, the first thing to do is to add a reference to our employee business layer. And to do that, right click on the references folder, add reference, click on the projects folder, and add a reference to the business layer project. That should add you know, a reference to the business layer assembly. Now, we should be able to use um, that within our MVC application. OK, so now I'm going to right click on the controllers folder, add a controller, and I'm going to call this employee controller. OK, and I'm going to click Add, which should add the employee controller. And I have the index action method here. And then look at this. I want to now use um, you know, the employee business layer as our model, which is going to return a list of employees to us. OK, and to do that, what is the namespace of our employee business layer? It's business layer. So within our MVC application, within the controller, I'm going to use the using keyword and specify business layer. OK. So here, I'm going to create an instance of our employee business layer. Let's call it employee business layer object is equal to new employee business layer. And then this has got a property employees. And this is going to return an I enumerable, I mean a list of employees which I am going to store in a variable of type list employee. Let's call employees. Let's convert that to list. OK. And then I'm going to hand this employees to our view. OK. So obviously now at this point, we need a view which can render this list of employees. And to add a view, you know, we have done this several times in the previous sessions. Right click on the index action method, select add view from the context menu. Look at this. Index is going to be the view name. We are using Razor View Engine. And I want to create a strongly typed view. And I want the employee object to be the model for our view. And another important thing here, you know, I'm going to select this scaffold template as a list, which is going to write the code for us automatically. OK, so I'm going to click Add. And look at this. It should add you know, a view with name index.cshtml. As you might expect, look at this. Within the Views folder, it has created a folder with name employee and added this view index um, view index.cshtml. And look at this. The model is set to ienumerable business layer.employee. And the only change that I'm going to do for this one is to use some styles here. So um, all this HTML, I'm going to wrap this inside a div tag. So div style is equal to font family area. OK. All right. So those are all the changes that are required. Now, you know, don't worry about all this code you know that, that the scaffold template has uh, you know generated for us we'll be discuss discussing about these html helpers in detail in a later video session i mean if you look at this code it's pretty straightforward all it's doing is it's creating a table for the header uh, i mean a table row for the header here where we have the employee model name gender city and date of birth okay and then within each and then we have you know, the respective rows here displaying the actual data. Let me run this, and then we'll go through that code in a bit. So obviously, now it should list all the employees. OK, by default, it will go to the home controller index action method. But we want to go to the employee controller index action method. So look at this. I get the name, gender, city, and date of birth of each employee. OK, uh, so we also have the headers. Now, 
you if you want to modify this HTML you can do so in your view let's say for example I want to include a border for the table I can simply set table border is equal to 1 and then I also want to include a word you know for these actions edit details and delete I want to include a header saying actions now obviously when we click edit details or delete at this point we will get exceptions because we don't have you know respect to action methods implemented yet we'll be doing that in a later video session okay so let me also specify look at this this is the uh, last table header cell where we want you know some text like action there all right so now let me actually go ahead and refresh this and look at that I get the borders and that word action there but when I click on any of these links here or this link you know I get an exception look at that to which action method it tried to navigate create action method but within the home controller I mean within the employee controller do we have a create action method no obviously that's why we get an HTTP status score 404 in our future videos we'll see how to implement you know all these links edit details delete and you know adding a new employee all right on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day